Hi everyone, I just want to take a couple minutes to show you how to run the core service of ICE as a uh, headless remote OSGI service. I'm going to do that in Eclipse ICE actually, which is the workbench that you see on the screen. This is the latest unstable nightly of ICE and I'm going to show you how to clone ICE and set the target platform properly and then launch the server headlessly. Since this is the unstable nightly, it is also exporting the core service. So after I show you how to launch it on its own headlessly, I'm going to show you what it looks like inside of ICE when it's exported running remotely on your desktop view. So here we go. Okay, we're going to start by going to ICE's developer menu. So if you click developer, you can go to ICE and click clone. That's how we do development of ICE in ICE. We have this little menu, it does a lot of things for you. It clones it, it pulls all the projects, it configures everything properly, and it sets the Tyco connectors. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that button. This is going to take a bit, so I'm gonna keep watching Supergirl, and I'll be back. Okay, so it's been a uh, minute or so and uh, ICE pulled down everything, checked out all the projects which you can see here on the left. And uh, right now it's building the workspace. The progress bar says it's done, so we're done. Uh, let me mention two things real quick. Um, this is a, again, this is a nightly uh, install of ICE and it's in a clean workspace. That's the bit that I didn't mention. Okay. So before we can launch the core service, now that we have everything checked out, we need to set the target, the build target. So scroll down to org.eclipse.ice.target.neon, expand that, pop open the neon target in the uh, menu. I ran this earlier, so it might resolve quickly for me. If this is the first time you're doing it in a new build of ICE, it can take five or 10 minutes or so. Um, this one's running pretty quick because it's already downloaded all the bundles previously. And um, uh, so in a minute, we're just when it, once it says it's done, we're going to click this set as target platform piece in the top. Um, while it does that, uh, I am going to get back to Supergirl. Okay, the target platform is loaded. So now we're just going to go ahead and hit set as target platform. It loads it. Uh, it doesn't take too long. It's just going through and reconfiguring some bundles. Now it's done. We can close this window and let's go ahead and launch the core service. If you go back up to the org.eclipse.ice.core bundle, go ahead and expand that. Right click on the core OSGI.launch file go to run as and click one core OSGI and it'll kick off and then you'll see the console pop up here. If we take a look at that, we'll notice a couple things. Um, first, this big error message here doesn't matter. Uh, keep in mind, we're running this headlessly. So anything that says like the UI can't start or the help bundles can't start doesn't really matter because we don't have a UI. Okay, so um, this is the start of the launch configuration or of the uh, launch log. And down here at the bottom, we see a couple things in red. This is uh, logging coming on, but right here is an interesting part. It's saying something about our OSGI and it's saying there's a port already in use. So there are two things to keep in mind about this. First, it means that the remote service was exported. Second, it means that it had to change the default port to one port higher because something was already running on that port. And that something that's already running is the running instance of ICE, as I mentioned. So let's take a look at that. I installed a um, uh, Eclipse Communications Framework ECF for Eclipse SDK. So if you open up a new perspective, I'll show you that again. There's a little button here in the corner. If you open the new perspective, you can go down and click Remote Services if you have this installed. If you don't, you can get it through the Eclipse Marketplace in the Help menu. So if we pop open that Remote Services tab, um, this changes and 
Um, what we see here is the um, the plugin registry, the project explorer, some properties, and um, some endpoint and service discovery things over here. So um, under this menu is the exported service. So if I expand that, I can see where this is running locally and there's all sorts of other information about it. This is the interface that's running, etc., and so forth. So uh, that's how that piece works. Uh, let's go ahead now and take a quick look at the code that it took to get this running. It's really short, and I took it from one of one of Scott Lewis's examples. So if I just pop open the um, uh, implementation of the iCore interface, I can scroll down to the start method. Since I put it here, I know where it is. And here we go. This is all the code that it takes to run this. Um, these lines were already in ICE. I literally cut and pasted these and one more from um, uh, from Scott's example. And, um, and so that's it. Uh, in summary, um, I showed you how to clone ICE. I showed you how to um, set the target, how to launch the remote service, and then I showed you what the remote service looks like when it's running in the workbench. The first time I ran it, that service is headless. There's no UI associated with it. It's a separate process. It's done. The second time when I showed it to you here in the UI, that service is actually from the running instance of ICE. So um, if you have any questions about this, uh, let me know. You can hit me up on Twitter or um, uh, get in touch by email or anything like that. And thank you very much. Um, I know uh, it's been a long time since I've been on my blog, but I've been busy with a bunch of stuff. I'm going to try to pick it up um, again. So thanks very much, everyone, and have a great night. See ya.